We've written the basic code to set up and initialize the polybang external in pure data. Now the counts need to be initialized and the mods need to be initialized with the values of the creation arguments. Let's head back to line 19 and ensure the creation arguments are passed to the initializer method. We'll have two arguments and they'll be of the type t float arg and we'll name that one f1 and t float arg f2. Now it's really just a float. We could even use t float if we wanted, but again, this is the convention in PD. Let's go ahead and set the init count and current count. So we could do that here within polybang new by just typing x and then init count equals zero and x current count equals init count. The thing is, we're probably going to want to do this multiple times, so let's just go ahead and create a convenience method to do the same thing. So above polybang new, we'll type void polybang underscore reset count, and we'll pass a pointer of type polybang. Now let's copy this code we just created. Actually, let's cut it. And then we will call this new method within the new function. So a polybang reset count, and we'll pass x as the argument. We'll go ahead and create a convenience method to set the two mods, and we'll call it polybang underscore set mods. And the arguments will be a pointer of type polybang, and then two float arguments. Let's set the first mod, which is mod A, and we'll set that equal to the value of F1. Well, actually, if we think about it, these mods need to always be positive and they can never be zero. So let's go ahead and write a ternary statement that tests F1, whether it's less than or equal to zero. And if it is, it'll just be one. Otherwise, it will be F1. Copy this and paste it, and then change mod A to mod B and F1 to F2. Now within the initializer method, we'll call the method that we just created, polybang underscore set mods, and we'll pass X, F1, and F2. We're at a good point where we can stop and test our work so far and see if it actually builds and runs in PD. So we'll bring up the navigator pane, and you'll notice that polybang.pdDarwin is red, and that's Xcode's way of telling us that we haven't built this yet. So let's go to product, clean, and then product, build. And then when the text turns black, that means there's a product for us to actually use. Right click on that, choose show in finder, and we'll copy this, head to the desktop where our folder is, and then I'll go into the folder that has my PD file, and paste the copied product. Now I'll double click main.pd to launch my file, and because it's in the same folder, I can simply type polybang, and you'll remember at line 40, that's the symbolic name that I gave the object, and then if I click outside, it runs. Now if it didn't run, it would stay dashed, and we would have an error here in the PD window. You'll notice also there is an inlet and let's go ahead and try and connect a bang to that inlet. Let's send the bang to the object and you'll notice that we get an error and it's an error because it's red text. It says no method for and then bang in quotes. Everything in PD is a message and so we will need to define the behaviors of our external by handling different messages and we'll get to that next.